Are we recording? Yeah. The red dot at the top, yeah. Yeah, good. That is recording, yeah. Okay. Should we kick off, then? Is it 9 o'clock? It is in caution. <laughs> <laughs> 9 o'clock, what year? 9 o'clock, it's 2020, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so it's down the right in the 1850s. <laughs> okay, so, um, welcome everyone to um, our presentation. Myself, Andy Taggart, Marilyn and Liz. And before we kick off, you can just quickly introduce ourselves. I'm Andy Taggart and I am an online course developer. Um, just to see across the university, but in reality, uh, people with 99% with the business and law faculty. Okay. Marilyn? Good morning, everyone. Um, my name's Marilyn Dyson. I work also teach in the business and law faculty. Um, my specialism is business processes management and quality management. Thanks, Thanks. Marilyn. Good morning, everybody. I'm Marilyn Lees. I'm also based in the business and law school, part of the DA teaching team, and my area of expertise allegedly is marketing. So good morning everyone. Okay. And oh, this morning is going to be through the military, but specifically to the faculty. Okay, on the degree of course in business and law. Okay. Uh, just in case anyone's not completely familiar with degree of apprenticeship, it's a student uh Alongside the normal degree in business and law, also do, also completes an apprenticeship in their workplace. <clears throat> in the case of the army, we've been running these courses since 2017. Uh, but we did actually start running uh, business and law. I think business and law faculty was the first. Sorry, <clears throat> was the first in the university to offer degree apprenticeships. Um, we started off with just a handful um, of, of students back in 2016, and uh, now we have around 460, including around 60 army personnel. And they were originally introduced by the government in the hope of reaching the skills gap, the freedom of employment, and the hope that the apprenticeships would help meet that skills gap, but also give apprenticeships a little bit more academic kudos. Because there was a feeling in some areas that apprenticeships wouldn't necessarily have the same kudos as academic courses. Okay? <clears throat> and basically, with our Army students, it's a mixture of not learning and independent study. But clearly, with the Army students, it's very difficult for them to come to university a day a week like other apprentices do. So, what we tend to do is to bring them in on residentials for a week or so, a couple of times a year. And that's pretty much how we deliver the face-to-face, -face. well, what was the face-to-face -face, uh, content. And the rest of it is done by distance learning. And as you'll see, um, let me just uh, move this out of the way. Can I see that screen OK, yeah? Okay. We have obviously all undergraduates, all the degree courses come with a particular challenges, the pedagogical and technical challenges for the Army. And uh, these challenges uh, were probably a little bit more other other, other factors my other courses might have to meet. For example, that a student in the time for three months who was still wanting to continue to study. And also we've got the challenges of what we all have with distance learners, that distance learning, you know, the this kind of social isolation, cut off from your fellow students, the pressures of work, etc. etc. What kind of kind of compounded by the demands of the army. So, for example, we have students called the one deployed, as in short notice. Uh, they often don't work regular hours. They're uh, often they're away from the families, no support networks like that. So, we've got the challenges of distance learning, plus the demands of army life, and also operating the kind of, you know, that like, kind of army structure. And also, I think it was just even our earlier report to try and sort of an online seminar across 12 different time zones. Yeah, so that actually kind of, kind of so quite, quite, quite a uh, strong, quite difficult uh, teaching and technical challenges. Also, what we found is that the uh, Army students, in many ways, are kind of like different from the undergraduates. For example, they're very goal-orientated 
students. Um, they make clear why they want to do the degree apprenticeship, whether it's a promotion or for skills uh, after military life. But the point is, it can be very driven. For example, it would be very demanding of the upper lecturing staff saying, well, I mean, I've got this UK here starting in, in a few weeks, where's my reading? There you go. It can be very demanding of the lecturing staff. But, you know, which is a positive thing, you know, because it shows they're, they're committed uh, <coughs> to the course and I'm keen, keen to succeed. And obviously, also operating in a kind of disciplined, hierarchical organisation. And as uh, Marilyn and Liz will talk about later when they talk about the teaching side of things, in terms of actually teaching in groups, that can actually produce some kind of issues arising in terms of, you know, the different lines involved, etc., etc. Okay, so we have faced, I think, from the beginning, from the scratch, some kind of fairly interesting challenges. And I like to think, feel as a whole, policy with the team, I think we've been fairly successful in overcoming those challenges. As we'll see in conclusion, when we look at some of the student feedback and what they've actually said about how the course has gone over the last few years. Okay? Right. Let me just uh, pass on now to the technical challenges being taken up by Liz and by Marilyn. Over to you. Can't hear you, Marilyn. How are you on mute? Can you hear me now? Yeah. You can hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so thank you, Andy. And yes, so as, as you've heard, there are a lot of challenges, and I'm sorry to say I'm about to mention a few more. <laughs> the pedagogical challenges, <laughs> or teaching and learning to people like me, um, were quite interesting, but it was quite rewarding as well, I have to say, so don't get too depressed at this stage, because actually, looking back, and as Andy mentioned, the feedback is good, and they're keen, uh, and it makes it all worthwhile. Um, of course, one of the, one of the, the two real major challenges, if we look at it from the army students, or the apprentices, we should say, point of view, is that they've had no previous academic experience. So in addition to all the academic learning content, they're now expected to write an essay, or is it a report, or is it an assignment? And they're very clear about, well, what are you asking us to write? And we've never written anything before. And of course, you, they're so anxious about this, and that's where we're going to be talking about university resources. But they've been so helpful in supporting the students as well to overcome the issues uh, in relation to writing an assignment and this sort of the, the change in this academic uh, critical, actually writing a critique is something that they're just not used to. They're used to just being told to write facts and bullet points uh, and to write down no, none of their sort of woolly management stuff. It's all got to be very factual. So that's sort of one challenge in addition to the actual content. They've got this steep learning curve really. Some of them have not uh, had any academic or schooling experience really beyond sort of O-levels or GCSEs or, and have really joined the army to actually enhance their lives uh, more holistically in terms of learning. So any training, any education they've had has been in a, and I've mentioned training, a training environment where you sit there and you're just told what to do. So of course this whole environment is quite different for them. Uh, yes, and they are, their goals are different, as Andy has mentioned, that uh, they are well, already in a career mode. They're actually thinking about how they can progress in the Army. This is an opportunity for them to showcase their potential within the Army. Uh, and so we are there, our job really is to help them to do that, to facilitate that process. But also, you know, give them that they'll probably be leaving the army at a fairly young age, uh, looking for a second career, and we're hoping that this will all support their their life experience, really, and the opportunities that are available to them. The third point relates to the culture, really, and the reluctance of the more junior ranks to question the contributions of the more senior members. And of course, we have to remember we're actually, the, the apprentices are drawn from senior ranks. They've had leadership training. They're, they're sergeant majors or senior warrant officers. So they believe they've had all the leadership training there is to offer. So that's, that's another challenge is actually working
working with them to draw out their experiences and helping to relate the theory and the academic learning to the experiences they've had. Of course, they're not used to questioning, they're not used to challenging, and this critiquing that's so important in the academic environment. And of course, uh, the next point uh, leads on from the culture, and this belief that we are different in the Army. We are different. Everything has been internally provided, the training's provided, very little exposure to the outside, certainly the business world. But increasingly, when we look at the demands on the Army, they're working in different roles across the world. So we need to prepare them for that. But I expect many of you will have heard this expression, we are different in the Army. None of this business management rubbish is like, she is. This is, we are different. So that, these are just some of the challenges. And of course, and then we had to go back to the drawing boards as, as teachers to think, okay, I can't just deliver something like quality management for me. I think it's absolutely brilliant and can't understand why anyone would not agree with that. I've actually got to try and draw out uh, their experience and say, but actually what we're describing is quality management. If we look at it from customers, and of course they would say, well, we haven't got customers. We don't have customers in the army. But I'm sure many of you are used to hearing that in different teaching forums. Um, and therefore, we were able to work through using their experience to draw out the theoretical concept. And it's so rewarding because you see the light bulbs coming on. I'm sure Lisa has got some experiences there to tell us in the marketing as well, which has its own challenges, of course, teaching that subject. But when you see the light bulbs coming on, it's brilliant. And the last point is military social conservatism. And again, this comes back to the culture, doesn't it? The traditions, the names, the values, and working within that probably summarises all those points above. So I think that, Andy, that concludes the pedagogical challenges. Thank you. Thank <coughs> you.
and really using his knowledge to embrace the apprentices. And it's really important that the two-way process, that we as academics and the stakeholders in the learning journey learn about the profile of our apprentices. However, what we say to our apprentices is there is a raft of information and of help and support. And it's very difficult to one pick. Do you think for anybody starting at the university, how much information do we get as new staff? Thinking about our apprentices, they'll get bombarded with course leader, a module coordinator, a tutor. They will also get lots of different information of who to go to for this. So we on the DA team have really streamlined the information that we um, convey to our apprentices so that they know for this, they need to go to this person. And we like to call them, again, sort of physical interactions. Every time you have a communication with a member, Team. You know, it is a moment of truth for um, consumer behaviourists out there. It's really important that these are meaningful relationships, but also you know, it helps build, re you know, build relationships, build a sense of community and sense of belonging. It's difficult to build up you know, when you're on a, on a distance learning programme. So that's a little bit about the resources there. So looking at the demands um, on the teaching, I'm going to build a little bit more, well, not on what Marilyn has said. Make sure that we match those needs. 
So that's a little bit about how we try and approach and meet the needs of our DA Army apprentices. And again, learning material, the sort of two key words that I would have taken away from teaching them now for um, two years is it needs to be relevant and relatable. And again, I think this works with the general students as well. We are underpinned on the degree apprentice programme with work-based learning. What we teach has to be able to be applied in the workplace. And this does work very well with the Army. But to be successful at that, as academics, we need to understand their world. So I know of all the team that have been working with the apprentices, we've actually taken time to learn a little bit about you know, what roles do they have, how does this fit in, how does their career pathway move, and Marilyn highlighted you know, the different roles, that they can get short notice postings, you know, lots of family stresses, one minute you'll be in Bulford, the next minute you'll be in Aldershot, you know, then all of a sudden you know, the person who's in the army will be going off to Colchester or shooting off to Iraq. So really inconsistent and quite, you know, very worrying set of circumstances that some of these apprentices are sort of balancing alongside alongside their learning. So as academics, one of the things that we've really taken away is that we need to spend a bit of time understanding their world. And when we start the teaching, it's something that I did, I told them for the first, they came to us in January, and I, the first module they did was actually marketing. And I was in two minds on how to deliver this, and what I decided was to use their work-based knowledge and then apply it to marketing theory. When they get confident with the theory, then they can maybe look at other sectors, they can look at other scenarios, other case studies, but to engage in a whole new sort of context and a whole new um, amount of theoretical underpinning would have been, you know, it would have been, I think, a step too far and would have knocked their confidence. And so this small block teaching, you know, we know your setting because we've taken the time to learn about it, we're now going to give you some new theoretical underpinning knowledge. Let's apply that to your workplace. Then the next step is you'll see with Marilyn's case study that she's going to share with you. She actually related to actual industry examples and actually different sectors. So we're really expanding, developing the knowledge, but making sure that as they learn, they are getting relevant information that it is actually going to be useful in the work workplace that underpins the DA philosophy. And they can actually, you know, get some theory that they can usefully underpin. And just to, uh, uh, just to sort of share some words, within the degree apprentice uh, scheme, they're actually able to get the CMI, the Title Management Institute Level 5 diploma. And again, the Army apprentices really like this. There are clear standards that they have to match, and this matches uh, professional competency. So as we teach them, we really underpin you know, that they're getting the academic rigor, but they're also getting the professional underpinning, which they really enjoy and can see the benefit of as well. So that's a little bit about you know, the resources and how it's a two-way process. You know, people um, learn about the apprentices, but they also need to learn about what we can offer, how we actually teach in a slightly different way, and how we adapt the materials to, to meet the DA's needs. So I'm now going to hand back to Marilyn now, who's going to tell you a little bit about the case studies that they've undertaken. Hi, thank you, Liz. Um, I mentioned uh, in my um, just introductory talk about the teaching and learning that there were some light bulb moments, and I thought it might be helpful just to pick a few of these out to share with you. Um, if I can also pick up a, a question here from one of our um, participants about our approach to learning and development, learning and um, teaching. Um, there are so many pressures now on um, organisations such as the university delivering these courses, delivering these programmes, degree apprenticeship programmes, to actually demonstrate value, value to the organisation, value to the individuals, value in their role um, now and in the future, but value to the organisation. And that has really, again, influenced our approach to the teaching. It's very much trying to facilitate the learning towards what are our operational issues, what is it we need to improve, um, what would really um, impress my organisation in terms of outcomes to address a, a particular operational area uh, of need, and how, will it, how can I then shine my light within my role in the Army? Um, and so the, the coursework that they've been asked 
to uh, deliver was to compare the army with a commercial organization, but uh, using academic theories and uh, concepts that they'd learned during the business process uh, module, but actually focusing that on a particular issue, a, a particular need to improve a business operation within the army. And you think back a few slides ago, things are happening quite here today, a few slides ago we were saying the army are different. And then actually, yes, there are things we can learn from that, from other organisations. So just a few little examples here. Um, Liz is going to pick up on the marketing aspect. <laughs> First, we are really in relation to the business operations management, getting them to look at processes. Of course, at first they were saying, well, we don't have processes in the office. And I'm sure many of you have heard this before. Um, so then, moving on, getting towards the end of the module, of course, and the coursework, we can see that there are things happening, the light bulbs are coming on. Uh, the first one, I think, is, is uh, very interesting, but it's a comparison with the Formula One team. And of course, we're thinking here about servicing the vehicles, making sure that those operational vehicles in the theatres of war are not just fit for purpose, but actually go beyond that and actually create the army, empower them to actually deliver an excellent service to their customers. Uh, and to meet their needs and expectations. And of course, like many organisations, they're hierarchical, they're functionally uh, organised. So everything takes forever to achieve. And by the time the tank, for example, uh, is serviced and it's gone through different departments in different locations as well, maybe even different parts of the world, by the time it reaches the person that's going to be driving the tank, we find that the parts aren't available. It's not there. So this particular um, apprentice has looked at the Formula One team. What should they learn about pit stops here? Why can't we service vehicles more quickly? Make sure that we've got we've got them available when they need to. So really bringing together the skills in the army, rather than having all separate in sort of functional departments and different locations, but getting them to work more closely together as teams. And of course, this is quite new to the army now. There's culture towards more teamworking, and this is helping in that respect. Uh, the next one is really a comparison with the uh, police force. And in this respect, they were looking at the use of drones. Um, and the police use, as you, I'm sure many of you will know, a number of different types of drones. And they, they, they actually have the capability that the ones used in the army do not have. And this has to do with the actual um, procurement process, which took so long that actually by the time it became, reached the Royal Artillery in this case, the drones were, the technology was out of date, were not able to deliver what they needed to in the front line, so they've been working with the police force to see how can we work collaboratively and partnerships, which of course is a new thing. Again, thinking about how can we work outside our organisation to actually increase our resources in this current climate? How can we work with others to learn and improve what we do? The next example is uh, from IKEA which was really about the supply chain and about the management of projects overseas. Uh, again, many, many suppliers. They've got hundreds of suppliers. Uh, but often the suppliers and the contractors are working on specifications that are not going to meet the user's needs. So they've been working uh, closely with IKEA, looking at some of their principles and practices in relation to quality management, about designing the process and designing products much more closely in line with the user's needs. And we had a, an, a, an interesting example that um, was funny, but not so funny really, where uh, a tank had been designed, and I have to say it had been years, years in the design process. So in the meantime, the existing tanks, existing equipment was no longer useful. But it had taken so long that when the new tank arrived in the theatre of war, we found that it reached 
the top of a, a hill, some mountain, but actually when it got there, it got stuck there. It didn't go over to the top and come down on the other side. So they were saying, well, it's set for purpose, the suppliers were saying, the contractors, for us to design a tank that goes up hills. And they're going up hills, but you didn't say you wanted it to come down the other side. So this just really highlights the importance of working more closely in the supply chain. And so that's, I hope, three little examples, really, of that are helping to change the culture in the Army, to look more outside the organisation, and actually not forgetting the very important transfer of knowledge, this academic knowledge, to applying and solving some of these operational issues, some of these delays, wasted costs, millions of pounds, you can imagine, going on waste and delays. And so these are the sorts of issues that are value, a value to the Army organisation in thinking this apprenticeship, this degree apprenticeship course is good. We're getting some value out of it. And the individuals themselves are getting pride in their work, pride in their course as well. And as Liz said, this wouldn't have happened without the access to the brilliant resources within the university. And I do think that, and I know I'm biased here, but we have got a competitive edge. We're really good at being flexible in, in teaching in a different way, in the way that I've described, um, and actually drawing on the resources in, in our teams. So I would definitely endorse what Liz has just said there. Thank you. And I'm going to hand back to Liz, who's going to just tell us a little bit about the application of marketing. Can you mute? Oh. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Okay, thank you very much. So, Marilyn, thank you um, for those uh, examples. So, just going back to when I started teaching the apprentices uh, in January, so they were coming to university. Some of them hadn't been in education maybe for 15 to 20 years, hadn't done a distance learning, hadn't been out of their comfort zone. So, again, we used the theory, but used it based in a setting that they were comfortable with because we felt that was the building block to, to successful learning. So, when I did ask them, you know, how does the army market? They were brilliant to start with. They could talk about recruitment because obviously the army had wide recruitment campaigns. They talked about the snowflake campaign that had just run. And they were really comfortable with that. So then I said, so how do you, you know, your regiment, your battalion, your unit market themselves? So straight away they said, um, we don't do any marketing. And I thought, well, this is going to be a good eight weeks we're going to have together. So then we, I said to them, well, how did you find out about this course? How did you find out about the Army Degree Apprentice course? I saw a poster. So, again, it is drawing out some basic knowledge to actually apply it to their real life. And I'd ask them, you know, what sports clubs do they belong to? Yep, I do my football. I play my cricket. You know, I play rugby. Again, how did you find out about that? Or oh, there was something on the internet or I saw, you know, something in the mess. So it was step by step, and then I talked about personal marketing. You know, how does your unit, you know, if it's seen by its local community, and again, they weren't quite sure. I said, well, think about all the shot on a Friday night. How is that perceived by the public? And then we had some quite interesting conversations. And now I was like, well, that is all what marketing is. So it was really going back to basics but to get our you know, degree um, apprentices to start applying marketing principles to, to their sort of work settings. So they were all asked to do a marketing plan on an area of interest that they could then take back to their workplace, share with their um, officer commanding their CO, and you know, put it into place. So this one here was one of the examples that's actually currently um, being reviewed, and they're hoping to roll this out in the autumn. A mess is where... Um, people find when they live on an army base and their numbers were really low. They couldn't get anybody to go and so the marketing plan, part of the marketing plan for anybody um, new to marketing is, is you actually need to unpick you know, the reasons you know, behind it, why isn't it a success, you, know, you do your test all, you can do your portals. So they used it and, and unsoft as well. So they used all the different models to actually devise a live marketing plan that could actually be transferred to the workplace. So this suggestion, you know, they found that people didn't go because there was nothing, um, you know, that they could actually, you know, there was no reason for them to go because it was the same sort of tea and toast and then there was steak on a Friday. So this uh, apprentice decided let's have some themed food events and he was based at four military um, intelligence at Orford. So this is something that is currently being rolled out and they're going to use this, this coursework, you know, to try and 
increase the mess numbers, you know, and actually roll something out that they've learned in the workplace. So again, I hope these, all these examples of exposure have actually developed their understanding, how we've applied academic rigor, but we've also, you know, built their confidence and enhanced their understanding and their confidence in, in the university setting. So that's me, Dan Andy, on that side. No, thank you, please. Okay. Now, just to look at some of the tools that have been used and could be used in delivering blended learning, learning environment. Um, the balance of not using all of these tools, we're using some of them, and some are quite new, haven't got around to using yet. Um, what tends to happen is, um, I'll be asking you know, an activity, something to happen, what kind of um, tool can I use for it? And I go up and I just find useful, useful pieces of technology and to account, particularly with the what device they might be using, for example, another uh, laptop they're going to be using, a phone, tablets. So really, it's the account. I don't know what they're going to be using, they're using anything. So how to be platforms that could be pretty much ubiquitous across any kind of device. Also, if you take into account issues of inclusivity, you also have to use these technology. This one's got the mic still off. Yeah. Hey, so, uh, you've probably heard of some people, and in other sessions, we need to go into some more detail on some of these, uh, some of these platforms as well. Uh, there's a couple, though. Uh, okay. Um, Animation, uh, how many people have heard of uh, Boxer Boy? You probably have some of your hands, but let me quickly show you what that is. Yes, we have a for this. Oh God, I forgot to know how to. Okay, you log in to box the broadcast using your normal university details. Okay. And it's basically an archive of the things of live, I've got to free to air television, sorry, so not much scan of all these ITV channels. And it's a massive, massive resource. And you can use playlists, for example, a black black on picture. I need some uh, um, management which above and can find some videos about leadership and about management. Okay, you can request um, okay, you can click the button and you can embed these directly into different pages. So if you're looking for a video that could be a news program, could be a document, but if there are all sorts of things and that is possible for a value to take a look at it, okay? In fact, it's still fun, box of books, actually into your Moodle pages, very, very good. Okay? I've got to stop. Well done. Oh, sorry, 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 I'm going. Sorry. <laughs> Next one is an uh, animation program called Beyond, or Vion, that's how you pronounce it. Uh, and this uses animation, this uses animation across key points, topics, etc. This is one. Yeah. Oh, this is again. Sorry, I'm <laughs> keep overclicking here. Okay. Um, another one that's been popular in a number of lectures has the Vbox. Uh, I'll leave this on this actually later, later today, this week, to go into more detail. 
I do that what online polling surveying real time tool. Okay. Again, you access using your normal university credentials. And it's a way to push out polling to students. So if the students would have a link to the inbox app, they would have a link ID, they would go in and activate the questions or surveys and um, discussion. Where this has been it's fairly like weight. So it's very shallow, it's a very, very crowded Well all the devices we've tried on and have been and that's never quite successful. Uh, so uh, I have a question there from Tom. Tom, yes we have uh, I've got the broadcast that three teams that are licensed in their license for that. All the staff need to log in, go to box of broadcasts and log in your, using your university credentials and be able to get in. Then the buy on is licensed and it's quite expensive. We have a license with our DA, uh, my, my colleague Becky, we have licenses here. They are quite expensive. I'm afraid you have to go to your faculty if you are prepared to pay for those. Okay? Box of broadcasts is a very free team. Also, VVOX is university licensed, so again, you log in with your university credential and you'll be able to get the university of course VVOX. Okay? So, it's very, very easy to set up and it's been used to good effect for our, our lectures. Okay? Okay, Padless as well has been proven quite popular. Um, it's a really useful collaboration tool. And so that's been embedded directly into the Google page. I can just pull that here it is. Here's what I created a it's a group work, action, it looks very nice. Um, and again, it is very easy to set up. The learning curve I'm using this is very shallow. You can be up and, up and running with it very, very quickly. Um, students can have this viral link, or as I say, you can embed it into your Moodle page, and then you can use that. You can interact directly, so I click on this. I'm ready to start adding this now. Okay, you can't see this inside content. I need to start. And all happens content. And all happens as well. So as, as you're typing, it will be appearing on the wall as well. So I do for group work and types of work. Okay. Right, where's the presentation gone? Sorry about the joke, I'm not. Mm. I was going to say, if anybody can hear me, can you hear me, Marilyn? Okay. <laughs> all, all that Andy's showing, he's taught us very, very quickly. And you don't have to be an IT genius at all. Uh, I've deliberately taught part of the books and tools that, after the initial account kind of support, get up and run from me. Stuff can be actually pretty quickly and effectively. Okay, uh, everyone who's been learning this vast resource of uh, videos, uh, tutorial videos, if you haven't, I still think you have a look at LinkedIn Learning. Again, it's university to just plug in your, your, your university credentials, okay, and it's a vast, vast resource of videos. Okay, other ones, uh, these are book creators. Now, I'll best buy one lecturer to find something that would look good on a mobile device for documents and course handbook. Because um, you've got course handbook, 30 pages, it's a lot of scrolling, better download the PDF, etc, etc. But think of book trade, this is easy to use. It's designed for mobile devices, so you don't get the full kind of how, how, how good it looks on a, on a laptop. Very easy navigation. So the most obvious thing is basically just get the with some navigation. Okay, very easy to navigate through. It looks good. You can put images in there and you can put your in there. There's an the instructional video from one of our lectures, okay? Again, the free version is 40 books with this and it is dead, dead simple to use. Okay? So, back to my presentation. That's the creator. Okay. Another tool here, Rise, again, this looks great on the mobile devices. This is right in the pocket, so again, can be used for tutorial, uh, for, for guidebooks, for handbooks, those sorts of things. And we use them for guides on, 
Here, the to be apprentices, okay? If you can have videos that look nice on the top of your eyes, it's easy to navigate, okay? And easy to use, okay? And again, this is something we can't have designed that could be very useful for the students using on, 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 on tablets and then mobile phones. It looks actually great on those devices. It looks nice on the laptop as well, obviously, but um, on those devices, it's particularly useful. Okay? And that's drive. Okay? Next one is H5P. Again, there is a session on this. I'm not going to go into a massive amount of detail with H5P. This is like interactive assessment tool. Uh, it does quizzes, and also book. it can make videos interactive as well. And here's an example of a video that can, that can be made interactive. Right? This is what I mean. Okay? So what happens as videos playing, questions, we have questions pop up, students can pick the questions, answer the questions, and then as they answer the questions, they can see the video. Okay. You can have questions, or you can have, let me, okay, uh, here's a little missing word exercise. The point of this is, to make the video book more interactive. One of the students sitting there passing one of the students in the me watching the video, they actually have to interact with this, answering questions, etc. And the key is as well to make these videos fairly short. You only want videos potentially research to show you only want videos that are fairly short, five, ten minutes and then and focused on maybe a specific topic or an introduction an introduction to a, a unit. Okay? And to be honest with you, after about ten, fifteen minutes students switch off both mentally and physically and the video is too long. So keep them short of this kind of H5P you can keep it interactive as well. Okay? Another nice one are the H5P quiz. And a real good quiz, quiz a real good great quizzes. H5P is also a very powerful quiz too as well and does produce some really nice quizzes. And again I'll just show you a couple of examples. Okay, from this e learning tool site. Okay. Example touch a quiz here. Okay, and this is a nice little drag and drop. I don't know what the answers are. I'll just randomly drag words in like that. Uh, okay. So a nice little drag and drop exercise I can check. Yeah, I don't know if I'm wrong. <laughs> okay, or oh, you can be on two images. I should do better with this one. Okay, leaving child teaser. Oh, I'm just gonna let me. So I just, I, it's not letting me drop for some reason. I do apologise. It should allow me to drop. I don't know what's going on with it, but it does, it does work, I assure you. Uh, you can drag and drop. And also, it kind of works for these type uh, questions as well, that's the Okay? And that's HIP quizzes. Okay? So I'd say this is the tools that are being used, not all of them, not got more. I just want to pick out a few of the kind of ones that have been most successful. They're easy to access, either free or low cost, and a bit easy to use. Okay? And finally then, that's the tools, on to our conclusion. And I think, uh, really, you, know, you can't kind of get a better uh, sort of, you know, endorsement than what the students have actually said. And obviously this is down to the whole thing, <laughs> you might live and... Marilyn, I just worked in the background <laughs> helping out. <laughs> uh, so yeah, our students, I mean, like Marilyn and Liz want to say something about uh, what the students have said. Uh, you want mute, Liz? To be honest, we couldn't do it without you, Andy, either. It's, it's a team effort in the DA group, isn't it? Well, thank you. <laughs> so thank you for that. And there was a question there from Paul who was just asking that he found your um, information really useful, Andy, and that he loved all the links all being on the same page, because obviously a lot of information all sort of dropped everywhere. And I said the slides will be accessible after the festival, so that sort of cleared that up with everybody. Uh, but, yeah, Andy's really good at giving sort of practical um, top tips that won't take long to create. He's been working with IT Luddites for quite a long time, haven't you, Andy? Yeah, we really want to be looking for those things that big impact, but a low, a low, very low cost in terms of time and expense, but big impact. Yeah, definitely.
definitely. So thank you, Andy. So yes, yeah, so these are live comments taken from feedback that we've received from midpoint reviews, um, because the DA program actually teaches all year. Um, Betty, our program director, is actually teaching the army who are here this week on an online residential. Um, so they would have normally physically come in, but we've organised a week long of residential activities, so they're here um, virtually all week. Um, so these, so midpoint reviews are still going on. Some of these are from the uh, survey questionnaires at the end of a module. So some of the students' comments, brilliant instruction from tutor during distance learning. So the importance of clear instructions highlighted there. Rough assignments. I know this isn't always um, applicable to everybody, but because of these learners are really motivated, they're really keen, they do action the points that you make, so you feel that you do make a difference in their learning. So um, some of the lecturers um, provide an opportunity for a draft assignment. We also do a lot of group breakouts, which you can do on WebEx. You can literally put them into little groups, and as a lecturer, you can sort of pop in, see if they're working well. Again, our learners are mature learners and you know they are motivated but I would suggest I would also work you know with good undergraduate students you know the younger end of the student profile and we also offer one-to-one -one chats with our tutor and again thinking about distance learners you know whatever age whatever you know profile they are it's keeping contact and making sure they know who to turn to so a one-to-one -one, although it does take time and we do have smaller numbers and maybe the bigger programs within um, the university this is a really good way of keeping people you know on track and lecturer Bill Jones he teaches strategic management to our level six degree apprentices and he is now a YouTube star um, so he has done incredible um, short YouTube videos. They're not accessible widely, just, just to the cohort on the um, teaching team and to the learners. But the feedback we found from those are that, you know, that they might be on you know, traveling, they might be waiting for you know, to go somewhere, and they can just have a look at these videos and they're on their phone, and, you know, and it can enhance their learning or just consolidate what was delivered on a one-to-one on -a -one session. And that was one of the key things that we found this year um, through Bill's um, delivery, that the, the YouTube videos work, work very well. No minutes more than two or three minutes, short and sharp, and you can you know, forecast what you've done, or you can you know, consolidate the learning, signpost to something further, or just share something you know, quick that you've learned or picked up ready for the next session. So some really positive feedback there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if anybody wants to ask any questions, please ask them on the chat. Um, and also, you can contact us through our university emails um, and contact us that way. This recording will be uploaded um, at the end of the festival. If anybody's got anything they just wanted clarifying now, yeah, thank you for coming along today, and we hope that you did find some of the content useful and the application um, between sort of a DA uh, army apprentice and you know, the, the learners that you're working with as well. We're hoping to you know, share some best practice. Hello, hi, Hi. I'm Helen. Fantastic. That was really interesting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And um, another tech love here, Liz. <laughs> I do think the best way to value is to try them with coffee when they <laughs> 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 does work well. Very well for me. <laughs> and actually, just a quick question on um, the HD video and poll together. Yeah. I thought that, um, I've not seen that before, I thought that was excellent for sort of knowledge check learning throughout. Um, now, as you know, Andy, it would probably take me um, 365 days to put that together. Um, are, will our TSU um, su support or help us out on that? I wanted to put the polls on. Yes, um, yes, yes. Huh? Yeah. Uh, Comment who's running it, so might put something into that as well. Right. Okay. Okay, so we're not on our own. 
no, no, no. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you that was really really interesting thank you very much thank thanks Yvonne thanks Yvonne any more I'm just answering Francis' question there does anybody else have any other questions or queries which 54 so we've probably got a few minutes before we'll need to close down and get ready for the next um, session that we're joining Marilyn have you got anything else you just wanted to add Marilyn can hear us. No, Marilyn, she is. She got. Okay, right. Thank you very much, Andy, and thank you for supporting us this year as well. It's been really appreciated. It's been good fun. <laughs> it has, actually. We've learned loads. <laughs> okay, thank you. Do we need to stop recording, Andy? Can I press the re can I take the power? Uh, no, I can't take the power. You've got